I'm Katie Allred, and I am so glad to be joining you today with my friend Todd Nettleton. Todd is the host of Voice of the Martyr Radio, and what is really awesome is today Todd is coming to talk to us about um, the Prayer for Persecuted Christians, the International Day of the Prayer for Persecuted Christians that is coming up. And so, Todd, could you maybe just tell us a little bit about yourself and about your work with Voice of the Martyr? Sure. Uh, I have been working at Voice of the Martyrs for 23 years, and Voice of the Martyrs exists uh, to serve persecuted Christians in more than 70 countries where they face persecution for doing the things that we kind of take for granted, gathering together for worship, going to church, reading the Bible. Uh, so we serve them in the countries where they're at. And here in the U.S., we tell their stories to try to inspire and encourage American Christians uh, with their faithfulness. Okay, so my question is, okay, first, let's tell the people, when is this day? <laughs> first Sunday in November, November the 7th this year, is the International Day of yes. Prayer for Persecuted Christians. But uh, if, if your church is already scheduled on November the 7th, well, then pick November 14th, pick another day. The important thing is every church needs to be in prayer for our persecuted family members. Yeah, I think especially now more than ever, right? Like, so why should this day be on everyone's calendar and commemorated in every single church? You know, I think there's uh, two answers to that question. One is uh, the scripture tells us to, you know, the, the Bible says, remember those in prison as if you were in prison with them. Well, if you were the one in prison, what would you want people to be doing for you? The first thing you'd want is that they were praying for you. For so. Sure. I think that's that's part of the answer. The, the second answer, though, is when we talk to persecuted Christians in hostile and restricted nations and we say, hey, what can we do for you? The first thing they ask us to do every single time that we ask that question is pray for them. Uh, and so this day, the International Day of Prayer for Persecuted Christians is a direct response to their number one request that we pray yeah. for them. Right. Okay, so who are the people that we are praying for, Todd? And can you maybe tell us like a story or two about how, um, just introduce us to a persecuted Christian so that we can be praying for them specifically? I would love to do that. And in fact, uh, let me share a story from my book, When Faith is Forbidden. Uh, it's the story of a lady named Sister Tong that I met in China. It's now been a number of years ago, but Sister Tong, when we were there, had just been released after serving six months in a Chinese prison. And her crime, if you can call it that, is that she hosted a house church meeting in her home. So at that time, uh, they were raiding house churches. They would take down everybody's ID and information, but the, the host, the person who owned the home, they would go to jail. And so Sister Tong had just been in prison for six months because the meeting was at her house. And uh, we sat down with her and I knew you know, I'm going to come back to America. I'm going to tell Sister Tong's story. So if you're going to yeah. tell a story, what do you need first? You need the setting. And so let's let's get the setting of, of how this prison was. And so I said, Sister Tong, tell me about the prison. And the, the picture I'm thinking in my mind is, you know, tell me how big were the rats? Tell me how hard was the bed? Tell me how cold it was in the wintertime. And my translator translated the question to Sister Tong, and she got what I can only call a heavenly smile on her face. And she said something in Chinese and my translator said, oh yes, that was a wonderful time. And I gotta tell you, I looked at the translator because I'm like, there, I've, there's gotta have been a disconnect here. There's no way that anyone would ever describe prison as wonderful. And right. so I said, you know, are, are you sure that you understood my question? Like I'm asking about how the prison was. And he's like, yes, yes, I understood your question and yes, Sister Tong understood your question too, and that's what she said. And Sister Tong went on to say that during her six months in prison, Jesus had just been so close to her. He had been so real to her in that prison cell. And, and every single day she had experienced his presence. And she said, you know what else? In that cell, there were some other ladies. And when I got there, they didn't know Jesus. Uh, and I got to be the one who introduced them to Jesus, and they are now walking with Christ. And so her interpretation was, Jesus was with me in a, in a very real and personal way, and right. Jesus gave me a ministry to do. So, so why wouldn't that be a wonderful time? 
those are the kind of people that we're praying for on the International Day of Prayer for Persecuted Christians. I, I think of, you know, Sister Tong, I, I think of uh, Pastor Wang Yi, who right now is in a Chinese prison cell serving a nine-year prison sentence because he led an unregistered church. Uh, I think of Pastor Haile Naiski, who has been in prison in Eritrea for more than 17 years, still without a, a formal charge, without any kind of a sentence or a court hearing or a trial. He simply got arrested, and now he's been gone and away from his family for more than 17 years. Those are the people that we're praying for on this important day. Yeah, wow. What a, I mean, what a powerful story. Thank you so much for sharing those. Um, okay, so Todd, I think the voice of the martyr is helping us know who to pray for and how to pray, but the ministry is also on the ground helping Christians who are persecuted. So what does that look like in a practical sense? You know, our, our work in hostile and restricted nations really falls under three kind of big umbrellas, if I can use that term. Uh, the first is persecution response. So if a church is burned down, uh, we help, you know, the, the people, you know, maybe replace the sound system or replace the hymn books that were burned. If, if a person is injured in an attack, we help provide medical care. Uh, yeah. So persecution response is the first area that Voice of the Martyrs works in. The second area is Bibles. Uh, you know, we talked about the first thing persecuted Christians ask us for is that we pray for them. The second thing that they ask for is, hey, send more Bibles. We need more Bibles. And so that's the second area of Voice of the Martyrs' involvement in hostile and restricted nations. The third area is what we call frontline workers. And I sometimes kind of half jokingly call them pre persecuted Christians because they are Christians that are doing ministry in a hostile or restricted nation. They're doing ministry in a place where doing ministry means you're going to be attacked, you're going to be persecuted. We right. provide tools and training and encouragement for those frontline workers to keep them inspired, to keep them encouraged, and also to help them be more effective in their gospel work in those places. Okay, that's amazing. So what about us? Like, what about us living as free Christians? Like, um, like us living here in America, as we hear these stories and as we connect with our brothers, how, how can we connect with our brothers and sisters who are being per persecuted? You know, I would encourage people to pray as a, as a first step, uh, because as we pray, we kind of understand that spiritual relationship that, you know, these are not statistics. Uh, they're not just people who live 10,000 miles from here. They're our family members. They're our brothers. They're our sisters. Uh, and so as we pray for them, we're kind of linked up spiritually. So I always encourage people to take a, a three-step response. The first step is to pray. Commit in your heart. Commit in your mind. I'm going to pray regularly for my family members who are persecuted. Yeah. Then the second step is to educate yourself so that you can pray more effectively. Because you know, it's easy to say God bless persecuted Christians, but it's also easy to forget to say that because it's it's not super personal. Uh, but as you educate yourself and as you learn names and faces and countries and situations, then it becomes God bless Pastor Wang Yi, who's in prison for nine years in China. God bless his wife, bless their son, Joshua. And, and when it becomes personal like that, then I think you're a lot more motivated to pray. And so number one, pray. Number two, educate yourself. How do you do that? Voice of the Martyrs has lots of tools to help you do that. The, the free magazine that we send out every month, uh, Voice of the Martyrs Radio, which is broadcast and podcast every single week. Uh, we have a website called icommittopray.com. And every week, we will email you fresh prayer requests from our, our brothers and sisters around the world. So there are lots of tools that VOM provides to help you educate yourself. So number one, pray. Number two, educate yourself so that you can pray more effectively. And then I always encourage people, number three is whatever God lays on your heart to do. Because as you're praying, as you're learning more, I believe God's going to open doors and, and say, hey, I want you to do this. And maybe this is write letters to Christians who are in prison for their faith. Uh, maybe this is sponsor Bible distribution, sponsor Bible delivery into some of these countries. Uh, maybe this is get on an airplane and go to one of these countries. Yeah. Uh, but that will come. The, the Lord will lay that on your heart as you commit to pray and as you're learning more and educating yourself. That gives the Lord a chance to kind of put his thumb on something and say, hey, this 
is the area that I want you to get personally involved in. So Todd, I know that, you know, right now you're, we're talking to, you know, thousands of church leaders and one question that, I mean, I bet that has come across their minds and they probably didn't even intentionally say that, but like, do our prayers even matter? Right? Like, is like, are we sure that like that God is hearing us specifically for this? You know, I'm going to steal an answer to that question from Gracia Burnham, who many of our, the people watching this will know Gracia's story. Her and her husband, Martin, were kidnapped in the Philippines. They were held hostage for 17 months, and then Martin was ultimately killed in a rescue attempt. Gracia was also shot, but she survived. Uh, and I asked Gracia that same question. I said, you know, you're in the jungle for 17 months. D you know, did it really matter that people were praying for you? And she said, periodically during those 17 months in the jungle, she would look at Martin or Martin would look at her. And one of them would say these words. They would say, somebody's praying for us right now. Yeah. And so I know that those prayers make a difference because I've heard it firsthand from Grace. I've heard it from so many others. And again, remember, the first request of our persecuted family members is pray for us they know that it does make a difference as we pray. And, you know, we encourage people not only pray for those who are being persecuted, pray for the persecutors as well. That's what Christ calls us to do. And, and we pray that our persecuted family members can even have opportunities to witness to their persecutors. Yeah, for sure. I think that most of us would say that we do want to pray for the persecuted, but we often don't know how to do it. Um, I love that, like Jesus model prayer for us. And, and I believe that we should model prayer for others. So, um, if we don't know exactly like what we should be praying for, can VOM help us with that? We absolutely can help. And I've mentioned, I commit to pray.com. That, that's a great tool to get specific prayer requests every single week. Uh, but the other thing I would encourage people is just think about your own needs and, and use that as a guide. When you sit down to a meal, pray that that imprisoned Christians will have enough to eat that day because yeah. that's a, a legitimate Good request. Time. That's a legitimate concern. Will they have enough to eat? Now, when you have aches and pains in your body, pray for mm. those who are suffering aches and pains because of the name of Christ. Uh, when you get dressed or, or go into your house, pray that persecuted Christians will have a roof over their head. Pray that they'll have clothes to wear that day. I, I think we can know a lot we can learn a lot just by thinking about our own needs and then praying those same things over our persecuted brothers and sisters the other thing that i would really really encourage people to pray and this comes directly out of gracious story is pray that they will know they're being prayed for uh, yeah. there there is such a lie from satan in the midst of persecution that says hey you're all alone here nobody cares about you you're forgotten and so one of the things that I often pray for persecuted Christians is, Lord, somehow supernaturally through the Holy Spirit, let them know that I'm praying for them right now so that they know they're not alone. They're not forgotten, but they are truly a part of the body of Christ and the rest of the body is remembering them. That's amazing. I love that. If you have a body ache, pray for those that do have, like pray for the same for your persecuted Christians or your persecuted friends, right? I think that like, that really reminds me of the ambulance thing. Like, right. Like we pray when we hear an ambulance going down the road. Um, it's almost like a habit stacking thing where, you know, in habit stacking, you, you do one thing. So you remember to do another, I grab my hair, hair dryer every day and I pray for everything that I'm grateful for in my life. And so I can also add to pray for persecuted Christians in that same way at the same time. So yeah, no, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. So the next question I have for you is what are the next steps? I know, and I hope that all of us want to pray. And I think there are some listeners who are definitely going to catch on. They're going to go to I want to commit.com and they're going to, um, uh, what is, say the URL one more time. I commit to pray.com. I commit to pray.com, yep. which I'm going to go to immediately after this. And I'm going to commit to pray as well. And so um, I know that we all want to pray. I think there are definitely some people who are catching on. Are there ways, other ways that we can get involved? You know, one of the things about the International Day of Prayer for Persecuted Christians, it's it's the the only danger that I would point to is that that as churches, as Christians, 
we sort of cross it off our calendar and it's like, okay, yeah, we did that. We're, we're done for this year. Good. We'll, we'll see you persecuted Christians next November when it comes around again on the calendar. We don't want that to happen. Yeah. And really it can't happen because uh, our brothers and sisters are being persecuted every day. Uh, we can't afford to just have one day of the year where we think about them and pray for them. So uh, I think that's the biggest takeaway. And I've mentioned some of the tools, you know, the Voice of the Martyrs magazine and, and Voice of the Martyrs radio and I commit to pray.com and even, uh, you know, our social media presence on, on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. We send out prayer requests through those mediums as well. Uh, but the biggest thing is just making that commitment and, and saying, hey, this is going to be a regular part of my spiritual walk. I'm going to be connected with my family around the world. I'm going to pray for those who are suffering for their faith. And just having that kind of heart commitment that this is not going to be one day a year for me. This is going to be a regular part of my spiritual walk. Okay. This has been fantastic. This is really good. I appreciate so much, Todd, that you've taken the time to share with us about the International Day of, per day of Prayer for Persecuted Christians. What I love is that's November 7th, but you can celebrate it at any Sunday. Like you can honor it and commit to praying for it on any Sunday. And so there's so many resources at Voice of the Martyrs. Um, they are so amazing at doing this work and we love being partnered with them at Church Comp. So again, thank you, Todd, for joining us. Is there anything else you would like to share with our audience before we go? Yeah, let me point people to persecution.com slash IDOP for International Day of Prayer, persecution.com slash IDOP. All of the resources for churches are on that website. All of them or most of them are downloadable, so they're digitally available. Uh, and yeah. that includes a short video that you can share in your service or in your uh, Bible study groups that, again, kind of shows the kind of people that we're praying for on the International Day of Prayer for Persecuted Christians. So persecution.com, that's the main Voice of the Martyrs website, and then add slash IDOP for International Day of Prayer all of the resources are right there. Okay, amazing. Thank you so much, Todd, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Again, this is Church Communications. We're so glad that you joined us today. I hope that your church goes well this Sunday and